Due Process, honored for three consecutive years with the Mid-Atlantic Emmy for Outstanding Talk Program Series. We all have them, and we use them on the road. But have cell phones brought us more than just convenience? Are we dialing up new driving danger? The case for banishing cell phones from your car on this edition of Due Process. Major funding for Due Process is made possible by the New Jersey State Bar Foundation, committed to educating the public about the law. Additional funding is provided by Lawyer's Diary and Manual. They have become our constant companions. They've revolutionized the way we stay in touch. But what have they done to the way we drive? I'm Raymond Brown, and we're talking about cell phones. Are they a threat to road safety? Is it time to just hang up? And should there be laws against being on the phone while you're behind the wheel? We'll hear from both sides of the cell phone story and from a psychologist who'll explain why we may have trouble staying on the phone while staying safe on the road. But first, here's Sandy King. Raymond, the truth is that everyone is doing it. Statistics say that 85% of us use our cell phones while we drive. And if you've ever missed your exit while chatting on your mobile phone, you won't be surprised to know that some studies say cell phones can create a real distraction. The market is responding, too, as I learned when I turned on my television late one night. Public enemy number one, drivers on cell phones. Okay, that's just a commercial. So the cell phone won't land us on the most wanted list, but it may not be doing much for the way we drive. Meanwhile, you're swerving all over the road. Sure, it's revolutionized the way we stay in touch, and it's given walking a whole new step. But it's the cell phone on the road, the chat behind the wheel, that has set alarms ringing. At least in some quarters. I said, you know, this is an issue that I think I need to bring forward to my colleagues in Marlboro Township so we can talk about it because I felt it was an important safety issue. So little Marlboro Township became the first in New Jersey to make a legal call against cell phones. All it is is a quick second it takes and an accident and somebody could get hurt and I don't think it's worth it. It was a point driven home when a two year old Pennsylvania girl was killed in a crash. A cell phone using driver ran a stop sign. And that kind of like shocked me. The fact of the matter is, is that there's hard statistical data rela relating to uh, cell phone use. In fact, a Canadian study published in the New England Journal of Medicine in 1997 found that driving while talking on a cellular phone increased the chance of an accident fourfold. It actually equates it to drunk driving. Yet another study claimed that the chance of a fatal crash became as much as nine times more likely. Introducing the No Hands Universal System. They are the kind of charges that the cell phone industry has been busy trying to disconnect. During the last year, we've seen an increase in just the New York metropolitan area alone of nearly 87 percent year over year people are buying more headsets. And both Marlboro and Carteret, the second Jersey town to put a local law on the books, have bought the industry line on the safety benefits of a hands-free solution. What the ordinance does, it does allow for the hands-free device so that you can still drive your car and use your telephone, but you must have a hands-free device. Call, redial, voice book, or sleep. Call office calling and yet that study in the New England Journal found that the hands-free models were not indeed safer than their handheld counterparts despite industry insistence to the contrary 
suggest that customers do get a earpiece device of some sort. Um, they start at $14.99, they go up to $50. But is it in fact a handheld device or instead the distraction of the wireless discourse? People can learn to pull over to the side of the road and make their phone call if they have to. We're not saying they can't use the phone. We're saying they shouldn't be doing two things at the same time. It's a question the 100 million cell phone users may be forced to ask themselves, one the State House may be struggling with too. A bill has been introduced in the Assembly and the Senate that would go further than either of the local laws in one way. It prohibits any mobile phone use while a vehicle's in motion, with no hands-free exception. But it would also make driving while phoning just a secondary offense. The driver would have to be stopped and cited for some other infraction first. And Raymond, with plenty of resistance from the cell phone industry, both bills stalled in committee. Mm -hmm. A cell phone industry representative takes on a cautioning critic, and a psychologist gives us reasons why a phone call at the wheel could spell trouble on the road when we come back, so stay with us. Well, you know, obviously they're doing two things at once. They, you know, they're, they're listening and trying to pay attention to a conversation on the phone. At the same time, they're supposed to be, you know, two hands on the wheel and, and driving, looking where they're supposed to be going. When they're dialing the phone, doing anything, they're creating an accident because they're not looking, they're swirling side to side and everything. I think the cellular phones are good. I think they serve a, a, a good purpose. I mean, even while driving, even in your car. Pull to the side and then make whatever phone call you need to make. It's not that big of an emergency. You cannot operate a motor vehicle and use a cell phone and be safe 100% of the time, so they should not allow it. They should pull aside and make their emergency call. But people today use cell phones like they are just a leisure, and that's wrong. They're only for emergency. But most of us who own cell phones and use them on the road don't reserve them for emergencies. Are we putting lives in jeopardy, including our own? For some answers, we turn to Pamela Fisher of AAA New Jersey and to Martin Rothfelder, an attorney representing wireless carriers, and in Newark, to psychologist Maura LeMay, who's an expert in what happens to our brains when we try to do more than one thing at a time. Should be interesting. Pam, let me start with you. Um, you are obviously a critic of unlimited cell phone use on the road. That's Why? Well, is there some scientific evidence that supports this, or is this uh, just a feeling you have? There's a lot of scientific study that's been done out there, but the focus has been particularly on just the cell phones and not distraction as a general, which AAA is looking at. Our concern is that you're asking someone to take a task of driving, which is very complex, and add to it a whole other function, that is talking on a cell phone. When you're driving, you really need to be focused on that individual task and not add other things to it because we're dealing with a lot of traffic out on our roadways. We're dealing with operating a motor vehicle that, if not operated safely, could kill someone. So when you add in the distraction of a cell phone, it can really complicate things and cause a problem. Would you favor some legislation from the state of New Jersey, from Trenton, well, that would place limits? We're looking at it. Let's start. To, let's educate first, and then let's focus on additional research, and then make some decisions about whether we truly need to ban them or if it's part of a whole huge distraction picture that we have to address. Hey Martin, I'm not going to let you get away with just agreeing we should educate everybody because I suspect you agree with that, but is there a specific problem that you think has been traced to the use of cell phones that requires us to look into this? Is the, are they a distraction that imperils safety? If not properly used, they can be a distraction and can imperil safety. We don't dispute that for a minute. All right. Okay, I don't want to, but proper use, tell me what you mean by that. Proper use, uh, the, the cell phone industry has, has not been for unlimited use. It has suggested judgment in using cell phone use, not taking a call, not making a call when the, there's heavy traffic or other problems where you don't think it's safe. They I'm driving down the turnpike, I'm coasting, I've been on the turnpike for, you know, 20 minutes. Traffic is relatively light, I know the route, I could drive it in my sleep. Is it okay for me to take a call in your view? That's, that's a judgment call. We don't think that legislation at this point is warranted Would to address that. Would you recommend, that. in terms of what you and those you represent think, is that a kind of distraction that imperils safety for me to take a call when I'm doing, I only go 45, but when I'm doing 45 on the turnpike without a lot of heavy traffic and someone calls? That's probably a circumstance where many of uh, cellular subscribers would feel comfortable making a call, hopefully not dialing all the numbers. 
Um, but again, it's a judgment call, and we recommend to subscribers that they use judgment, and we think that's the primary answer. The, the, the studies have indicated that there are a whole variety of driver distractions out there, and people have admitted to the response insurance uh, opinion survey done in late 1999, about a, about a year ago, indicated that there are seven activities that come affront. Okay, let me ask you to hold use. the seven activities. Okay. I want to get to other distractions, but I don't want to lose my train of thought. Okay. Because uh, tomorrow I can only do one thing at a time. So let me ask you, is there what you would regard as hard, reliable scientific evidence that the use of cell phones is a distraction that ought to warrant our general concern and maybe the concern of legislatures? Well, I have a little trouble with the hard and reliable because that's a very strict criterion. But uh, there, there is, I know, evidence that there is an increase in accident rates with the use of cell phones. And there's a lot of hard, reliable data on doing th more than one task at one time. We can actually do at least two and sometimes three and four tasks at one time. But the evidence shows that uh, the tasks suffer. And the particular task that suffers is a, a continuous task like guiding a car along the road. Can I, can I interrupt you? Let me ask sure. you two quick questions. There was a, new, a study in the New England Journal of Medicine in 97 uh -huh. that had two conclusions that interest me. One is uh, a four times more likely, right. uh, greater likelihood of accident if a person was using a cell phone. But also, it said there really wasn't much of a difference between hands-free phones and the kind you would hold in your hand. Do, are either one of those conclusions the con answers that you feel comfortable with? Uh, well, the first one I think is probably a good evidence, although it's not uh, strictly hard and fast. It's not experimental evidence where you vary things. It's uh, just uh, evidence that comes from a correlational study, which is not as good as a, an experimental study. Uh, nevertheless, it's indicative, and it wouldn't be surprising if cell phones did have an effect on uh, on behavior in driving. But, uh, since Mar both Martin and Pam are anxious to get into other distractions, let me ask you this. Are you equally convinced that there's at least some indication that hands-free phones may also be a distraction just as the use of a phone in your hand? Uh, there is some indication that it might be, uh, although I can't see how it would... Uh, re I think the, uh, the dialing act itself is probably be the mo would probably be the most distracting uh, thing so that if you could dial with a voice system, uh, that might be uh, that might take care of it. Uh, but uh, the hands-free uh, does not completely answer the question because, or answer you know, answer the problem, because communication is one of the tasks that does interfere with uh, with doing a continuous task like driving. Well, let me come back to Pam. Pam, are you saying that I'm riding down the road and I'm talking to my cousin or my passenger or my friend that I'm really engaging in conduct that can interfere with my driving? Absolutely, and if... absolutely, because you're again taking your attention away from that task, that multitasking thing of driving, which requires you to visualize, okay. to I, hear, to do a lot now, of different I things. I spent many a year when my kids were in willing to ride with me. Now they're mm -hmm. too busy to have any time for me. Talking to them about a host of issues. Sometimes sure. it's the only time I can keep them in one place. Right. Are you telling me that AAA is going to start advising folks that they shouldn't be engaging in important conversations or maybe any at all while they're driving? No, we're not going to say that. I think the key here is that we have to look at, again, go back to the basic task we're talking about, which is operating a motor vehicle. It's involved. It's dangerous. So you want to try to minimize the distractions around you as much as possible. That doesn't mean you don't talk to your passengers. That doesn't mean you don't have a conversation. I have a five-year old who's in the back who talks to me every time we're in the car. But we have to recognize that there are times when you have to really focus on the task and you have to tune those other things out. It's very important. So what we're saying here is that we're not, we're not saying, you know, you have to be 100% focused on driving all the time from the standpoint of, you know, no one else can talk to you, nothing else can be out there. But we need people to recognize that what they're doing when they drive a car is so involved. Okay. Now, Martin, I suspect you're anxious to tell me about those seven, but before you do, let me engage in a little bit of hypocrisy. I'm a multiple offender. I do talk on the cell phone while I drive. In fact, sometimes I take advantage of the fact that this is time that I can spend calling. But the New England, I mean, the New England Journal of Stud Medicine study that I talked about earlier actually said that they compared the use of a cell phone to the equivalent of having three drinks. And certainly we do take very seriously the kind of 
degradation in performance that comes from that much consumption of alcohol, that would suggest that the problem, at least that some folks see with cell phones, is a serious one and not to be sort of dismissed as like a lot of other distractions. The, the improper use of a cell phone, the uncareful use of a cell phone is a serious problem and we take it seriously. The authors of that study, however, have been have themselves been concerned about the excerpting of that study and compared to drunk driving and I believe that a lot of that is, is uh, doesn't really give a fair picture of their study. Two of the more recent studies, one out of Harvard, another out of the Brookings Institute, indicated that there needed to be more data prior to addressing this through state legislation. And secondly, I've also indicated that the, the data should look at all distractions. And uh, that is why the industry is supporting uh, Senate Joint Resolution Number 21, which, which would provide for a state study of driver distractions, including cellular phones, okay. um, and, and come up with uh, policy recommendations. Let me make two points. One of the studies you talked about, the Harvard study, was actually funded by the industry or by industry-related the entities. Is that true? Um, I think there may have been some industry funding there. I'm, I'm okay. not 100 percent. There are also two bills in the Senate, one of which would actually impose some restrictions, the other of which is a study bill. Of those two, the one you're saying the industry favors is the one that would call for greater collection of data by police about what accidents may have involved cell phone use? Um, I th t they're talking about uh, something in Wisniewski's bill. It, a it asks for data collection related uh, accidents. Um, the industry has taken no position on that, but generally it has supported a uh, collection of data. It would prefer collection of data from all distractions. Um, and again, we support stu studying uh, is consistent with some of the leading studies. We support now, getting this data. This conversation is a little soft because I don't think that I know from either of you what you would accept as safe and unsafe cell phone right. use. Right. So can you be precise Absolutely. about what you would object to and then maybe you can tell me and then we can go to more and see what you think about it. Well our philosophy is that you shouldn't be operating a cell phone when you're driving a motor vehicle, period. Okay. A cell phone is a wonderful safety device. That's okay. how we view you. it. So no operation while no. you're operating. By no. the way, and you don't operate your no. Vehicle. Okay. Nope. I just want to see if you're consistent. Now, Martin, <laughs> is that an acceptable definition of safe cell phone use? Don't use the phone while you're driving the car. I think it's quite acceptable for wireless subscribers who feel that way that they can't do that safely to never use the cell no, phone. No, I'm not, no, I'm not asking you about the, how people feel themselves. Pamela's proposed something that I suspect is going to be considered and talked about in the legislature someday. I'm and that would be a, it'll be talked about. It may or may not get into yes. a bill. So if you're called to the legislature and they say, we're thinking about saying you can't use the phone while the car is in motion or while the car is being driven, would you say yes or no to that as a law coming out of the legislature? M most of the wireless industry would oppose, and as a matter of fact, all of the wireless industry would oppose an outright ban. Okay. Now, Maura, we finally got at least one area of clear difference. That is, Pam saying, look, no use while you're driving, and Martin saying people can, with safety under some circumstances, do two things at once. Is this task, using a cell phone, at any time consistent with the operation of a motor vehicle in terms of what you know psychologically? It's consistent with the ordinary driving operation of the motor vehicle, the, the kind of situation that you were talking about earlier where you're driving along a familiar road at uh, a safe speed and, and so on. Uh, it's not consistent, uh, Pam is right, it's not consistent with anything that happens in the car. If any uh, distraction or anything comes up uh, such that might lead to an accident in the long run, such as another car swerving in front of you, uh, a large truck coming up behind you, or something else, uh, then, it's, uh, then you better uh, desist from the cell phone and get off it completely. But, but, but that's, a, that's a pretty I mean, most of us who've been in accidents um, have the experience that it seemed to come out of nowhere, that we had no warning. Um, this uh, seems to me to go to the question of alertness. Why wouldn't your position be really you can't have the cell phone because the split second of concentration that's directed away may cause you to not see the accident coming. Well, uh, it may seem as if it's a split second, but uh, actually we do often have enough awareness or enough warning of a system. Uh, I guess I'm, uh, what I'm talking about is not so much the uh, very uh, immediate uh, thing that precedes an accident, but the perception of a dangerous situation such as cars uh, weaving, a, a car weaving in and out among the cars that among which you're driving or uh, you're approaching an exit or an entrance where you know that cars are going to be coming in and off the highway that kind of thing if you simply say then to the person you're talking to look I can't talk right now because the situation here has become 
uh, too attention demanding. All right, well, let, me, let, let me go to, to something that I think makes this a more complex subject. Uh, we have a psychologist privilege here, so I'm going to tell you something that's happened to me. I'm sure to no one else. And that is I'm driving, say, from Newark to Camden on the turnpike, and I get to exit 4 from exit 14, and I have no recollection of the trip because my mind has been somewhere else, working on a case or thinking about the upcoming due process. It seems to me that I've been distracted in some way without any mechanical device at all. And if the legislature is going to get into it, doesn't it have to look at a host of other distractions that may be comparable? I mean, what's the difference between talking to your kid and talking on a phone? Oh, yeah, absolutely. The legislature should look at a number of other things that might be distracting. But the one you describe in particular is something that uh, people do while they're driving, and they shouldn't do it. Uh, you should not think about cases. You should not think about your work when you're driving because work in general is just. Wait, 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 wait. I hate to interrupt you, Maura, but I mean, that's like not thinking about pink elephants for the rest of today. Well, how do I not think about my work? I mean, how do we train a whole population of people to not think about the most important things in their lives their marriages, their divorces, their children, their work? Well, that's uh, one of the biggest questions. Uh, I, you know, if you're going to start legislating things, I don't, there's no way that you can legislate what people are going to be thinking while they're dri driving along the road. But perhaps the you only, could train people in meditation. I mean, it seems well, as though yeah. you're posing... No, you, would want, you wouldn't want to do that either. That, wouldn't be, that would be uh, just as bad well, as being distracted by... But, I mean, I guess what I'm saying is that if you say that there are these distractions that are significant, that seem almost comparable to a cell phone, it seems to me at some point we have an obligation if we're going to look at one to look at them all. And I know Martin has a list of seven that he's dying to get to, which we'll eventually hear from, that suggests maybe there's a whole universe of things that are potential distractions that are as big a threat to safety as a cell phone. There are, but there are only some of them that are under our control, especially the control of somebody else, like the legislature. Uh, the ones that you just talked about are under our own control, and it is possible to say to yourself, I do this all the time. All right, let me, one more quick question that I'm going to come back to, I guess, here. Uh, our producer, Sandy King, listens to audio tapes of books. She's an intellectual, you know, uh -huh. all the time. What do you think about that as a level of distraction? I mean, she's listening to War and Peace or something that's really significant and weighty. Is that a distraction that would trouble you? Uh, yeah, I listen to tapes and books all the time, and I don't think it's a distraction uh, that would, should, should really trouble you unless you're coming to some unusual situation. Uh, for example, I turn it off when I'm approaching uh, what I know is, is going to be my exit because I know I have to pay too much attention at the exit. Okay. Martin, I know you want to tell us about the seven. Can you just list them? Um, from that, that these are survey, these you would argue two, are comparable yes, to the cell things, phone. Things that uh, people said they did more than talk on a cell phone that distracted them from mm -hmm. driving include tune, tuning in a radio station, mm -hmm. eating, turning head around to speak, reaching for something, reading, writing, and using the glove compartment. Okay. Now, Pam, those strike me as, item, as activities that could be Absolutely. comparably distracting. Yes. So yes. it seems to me that you're wandering into a morass here because it's, it's first of all, you see, it seems to me that I don't know how you distinguish talking to the kid from talking on the phone. If you have a child. I mean, it's very, very difficult. I'll be the first to admit that. I think where, where we're coming from, from the AAA perspective, again, is we're looking at that cell phone as a, as a safety device, as I said. It's a wonderful thing to have on your person in the event you have an emergency. And it happens in automobiles. You're in a crash. You break down. Um, you're, you're concerned because you're being followed by someone and you don't know why they're doing that. You need to reach out for help. It's a perfect device to give us the ability to reach out to someone for help. So that's, that's our position is that this is a great safety device. Nobody should be without one in the event that you have an emergency and you have to reach Martin, out for you're help. you're not buying emergencies only. Do you think ultimately five years down the road when the legislature acts they're going to restrict it uh, cell phones to emergency use only? Um, I don't know. Some of the proposals that have been made out there provide exemptions for emergency use, but let's, let's think about that for a minute. If you ban it generally from use in the car, people are generally not going to have that cell phone handy. They're just not going to because you can't use it. Or they're less likely to. They may even be less likely to subscribe. Cell phones can and do help save lives, help the public safety community get information to them. So when you think about restricting or banning the use in the car, you're going to have to think about the fact that, that will lessen the use of them and public safety necessarily. Since you favor their use, do you feel like you're on a slippery slope? That is, once we start down the road of restricting how and when you can use them, that ultimately the restrictions are going to get tighter and tighter as each time there might be an accident that's blamed on that or someone come up with an anecdote? I suppose if people are taking the knee-jerk reaction to a, a press story about cell phone use, the, the answer is yes. And that's why we've been consistently suggesting uh, 
data on all distractions. Another area to look at is uh, the, as far as broader policy on this is use of reckless, seconds. careless, and uh, the new statute in New Jersey on unsafe driving, which can be used to cite somebody who's using a, a cell phone unsafely. For the time being, you're happy with unsafe driving statutes, but down the yes. road, more restrictions? Restrictions in, into emergency use? Education first, then let's move into legislation. Okay. I want to thank you all for having been with us today. That's it for this edition of Due Process, but we hope you'll be here next week when we'll be back to discuss another issue of law and social justice. Until then, for Sandy King and all of us here, I'm Raymond Brown. Thanks for watching. Public enemy number one, drivers on cell phones. Do you find yourself searching for your cell phone as it rings? Maybe it's in your purse, your pocket, on the floor, or even on the dashboard. Meanwhile, you're swerving all over the road. Well, those days are gone for good. Incoming call, answer. Yes. Hello, this is Chris. Uh, hi, Chris, it's Dennis, how are you? Hi. Are you happy new year happy new year to you how's everything going it's going good i haven't talked to you in a while exactly that's why i'm giving you a call while you're in your car because i know you have your hands free kit so you can talk to me while you're driving great great Major funding for due process was made possible by the New Jersey State Bar Foundation, committed to educating the public about the law. Additional funding was provided by Lawyer's Diary and Manual.